Okay, welcome to Test 19 in our series, The Edge in Economic Revision Webinars. This one is a special video. We're going to ask 15 microeconomics questions across a large part of the A-level syllabus. So instead of just focusing on one topic, we're going to test your understanding of 15 related topics. Hopefully you'll do well. As always, of course, just press the pause button when you need to have a think about the answer, and then we go through it together with a bit of explanation for every question. Good luck with these. Uh, 15 questions on microeconomics. Here's question one. Firms X, Y and Z are all profit maximising firms. X is in a perfectly competitive industry. Y is in a monopolistically competitive industry. Z is a monopolist. OK, on the basis of that information, which statement about these firms is correct? Have a go, please, at question one. OK, so uh, X is in perfect competition, Y in monopolistic competition, Z is a monopolist. Which is correct? The right answer is D, only Z will be able to make super normal profits in the long run. Uh, X, you can be productively efficient in perfect competition. And of course, in the, with monopoly, you can get big scale economies. Y is not going to be product, uh, actively efficient. It price above marginal cost in monopolistic competition. Uh, Z, uh, sorry, Z is not a price taker. Or why, in fact, because uh, they both can, they can both set the price. It's D. The reason being, in part, because of the assumption of no barriers to entry, zero entry barriers in both perfect competition and monopolistic competition means that in the long run, only normal profits will be made. New firms and new products will compete the profits away. Let's move on to question two. The government of X announces the penalties imposed on those found guilty of supplying cannabis are to be lifted, increased, but that possession of small quantities for an individual's personal use will no longer be a criminal offence. What effect are these changes likely to have on the black market price of cannabis and the quantity consumed? Have a go, please, at question two. OK, what do we think? Well, if we're going to limit the supply, if we're going to, if we're going to increase the penalties for supply, that's going to limit supply, isn't it? So a fall in supply is likely to increase the black market price. On the one hand, um, consumption will fall if prices are higher. But on the other hand, consumption will rise because of the threat of penalties is gone. So therefore, we can't be certain what will happen to quantity consumed. So therefore, the answer is B. Heavy penalties reduce supply, but there's uncertainty about the impact and demand on decriminalisation. Here's question three. Which of the following would be classified as price discrimination? Two examples here. Bus fares, insurance premiums. Have a go, please, at question three. So which of these would be price discrimination? The right answer to question three is D. So bus fares, yes, that's price discrimination. Higher insurance premiums for younger, less experienced motorists, no. Uh, concessionary fares to old, older people is third degree price discrimination. They've got a more elastic demand. Younger motorists, on the other hand, well, part of the reason for the increase in insurance premium for that group of motorists is because they're a higher risk category. They've got less experience behind the wheel and therefore the cost of supplying a premium is higher to the insurance company. So therefore it's not price discrimination. The answer is D. Question Four, test your understanding of production possibility frontiers. Here we go. JK is the PPF, PP curve. Two goods, X and Y, being produced. The economy initially produces uh, at point M, lies within the PPF. It then moves to point V. The question is, what's the opportunity cost to the economy of producing the additional quantity RS of good X? Have a go, please, at question number four. So we've moved from a point inside the PPF to a point on it. We've increased our output of good X. What's been the loss output of good Y? What's been the opportunity cost? The answer is there's been no opportunity cost. M lies within the PPF and therefore increasing output by RS, moving from R to S on the X axis there, involves no loss of output of good Y. Therefore, a zero opportunity cost. Here's question five. An advertising agency estimates that an advertising campaign would shift the demand curve for a profit-maximizing firm's product from D1 to D2. 
what does the shaded area in the diagram on the right hand side there what does the shaded area measure have a go please at question five okay so the advertising campaign has shifted demand out from d to d d1 to d2 the marginal revenue curve is shifting out as well from mr1 to mr2 therefore the profit maximizing output has gone up they can now charge a higher price and they're producing more so the shaded area measures the additional sales revenue sales income the campaign will be expected to generate we can't actually show the profit because we're not looking at the average cost we're not giving information on average cost there advertising campaign causes an outward shift of ar and mr the shaded area shows the new profit maximizing price multiplied by the quantity you get the revenue shorter answer i think perhaps to question six who knows which of the following defines a situation where positive externalities of consumption exist which of the following defines a situation where positive externalities of consumption exist have a go please at question six okay so what do we think here positive externalities of consumption if you've revised merit goods can you visualize the diagram if you can visualize it i think you'd be in good shape and the answer is b marginal social benefit is the marginal private benefit plus the external benefit and of course a positive externality of consumption generates external benefits might be worth uh, pausing the video but maybe drawing the diagram to show positive externalities of consumption check your revision notes question seven the diagram shows a firm operating in monopolistic competition it also aims to profit maximize if this is the level of output that's achieved which of the following statements is correct have a go at question seven please question seven quite a complex diagram here profit maximization output is output v output x lies to the right output x is the productively efficient output whereas the profit maximizing output is output v and the correct answer here actually is c firms operating on the elastic section of the demand curve it's not achieving productive efficiency it's not at the minimum point of average cost at output v the total revenue will be opsv rpst is actually the profit not the revenue firm supernormal profits ortv no that's the uh, that's the total cost not the total not the profit it's on the elastic section of the demand curve uh, because marginal revenue is positive you maximize revenue where marginal revenue is zero and that's when elasticity demand is one anywhere to the left of that if marginal revenue is positive uh, the, uh, the demand curve is elastic because a fall in price will cause total revenue to increase moving on to question eight business has a divorce between ownership and control and its management is aware of the need to meet the demand of shareholders which of the following business objectives is the most likely to be adopted by the management have a go please at question number eight so there's a divorce between ownership and control the management making the key decisions the equity shareholders um, obviously in the background there the most likely objective is profit satisficing satisficing is one way of meeting some of the objectives of the shareholders they want some profit they want some dividends but also some of the aims of managers who might um, emphasize prioritize revenue bonuses job security status etc etc so satisficing is a is an in-between price and output question nine is about the labor market calculate the number of people who have lost their jobs as a direct result of the minimum wage being increased from seven pound fifty to nine pound take a moment to think about the answer to question nine and the answer to question nine is b the number of people who have lost their jobs as a direct result is the fall in employment a minimum wage going from seven pound fifty to nine pounds causes labor demand in other words the level of employment to contract from 160 to 100. there is excess supply but of course the question is about the loss of jobs which is 60. question 10 is an elasticities question 
just checking your knowledge of three types of elasticity. Product X is price elastic in demand and is an inferior good. It also has a close substitute in the form of product Z. Possible elasticity's coefficients in this case might be A, B, C or D. Have a go please at question 10. So we're given three characteristics of product X. Price elastic, therefore it has to have a coefficient of more than one, so it has to be C or D. It's an inferior good, therefore it has to be negative, well both C and D are negative. So it boils down to substitutes. The cross elasticity of demand for two substitutes is always positive, so therefore the answer is D. In this case they are close substitutes, more than coefficients greater than one. Okay, question 11, following diagram shows the market for a merit good, which area represents the social welfare loss, which would occur if it was supplied in a free market economy, there was one without any government intervention. Have a go please at question number 11. So in the free market economy, what do we reckon here? Well, there is going to be a welfare loss. The, the private optimum and the free market optimum is output M, whereas we'd like to be at output R, as so under consumption the market failure. So what's the welfare loss? It's either KLM or LNP. It's either above or below. Or with positive externalities, it's above. The answer is A. The free market economy implies a private optimum where only internal costs and benefits are calculated at output M but there's a welfare loss of KLN because there's a social benefit lying above the, the private social cost at that point. Question 12. The diagram shows the cost curves for a firm. What does the firm experience as it increases output from Q1 to Q2? Have a go please at question 12. Okay, the right answer to question 12 is... B, diminishing returns. This diagram shows short run costs. Short run costs. And uh, therefore it can't be a commons of scale because that's a long run concept. It can't be D because we're not showing any revenue curves. We can't, we, we can't show the profit. Decreased average variable cost. No, average variable cost will be going up once the marginal cost is rising. It cuts to average variable cost. Diminishing returns, of course, is where marginal productivity goes down. Therefore, marginal cost goes up. So Q1 to Q2 involves a rise in short-run marginal cost associated with diminishing returns to variable factors such as labour in the short run. Question 13 is a question on utility theory. Uh, somebody allocates their spending between three goods X, Y and Z. The table shows the marginal utilities for these goods and their prices. How should the consumer spending be reallocated in order to improve, maximise utility? Take a moment, please, to answer question 13. So the key here is we need to think about three products and think about trying to maximise utility. You do that by equating the utility per pound spent. The right answer is B. Uh, if, you, if you spend less on X, well, for X, you're only getting three, if you like, three units of utility per dollar spent. Whereas for Y and Z, you're actually getting 0.33, a third is higher than 30%. So they should spend a little bit more on Y and Z and a little less on X because they're going to get more utility per dollar spent on Y and Z than they did if they focus on X. Curve 14, question 14, labour market question. The curve SS1 in the diagram is the supply curve of labour for a firm before the unionisation of the workforce. The union then negotiates a wage increase a wage equal to W. What does the labour supply curve now become? Take a moment, please, to answer question 14. So prior to this, the labour supply curve started at S and went S, M, S1. So it's not going to be S, S, M, S1 because there's now a union negotiated wage rate. You can't supply your labour at less than the wage rate. So the right answer is C. The labour spike will now start at the minimum wage, effectively W. It'll be perfectly elastic up to the point M, and therefore thereafter it's going to continue its merry way up the supply curve as wages rise. So it's W 
m s1 well well done we've reached the final question in this special edition of the edge question 15 the table shows the total revenue and marginal costs of a firm at different levels of production given the firm wishes to maximize its profits what is the highest output the firm will produce maximum profit which output please have a go at question 15 or last question on this test so the firm is trying to maximize profits you maximize profit when marginal revenue equals marginal cost and therefore you need a bit, a bit of number crunching a bit of calculations on this one the right answer is d because if you do the calculations marginal revenue at output level six is 30 we go from 190 to 220 also equals the marginal cost equal to 30. if you went to the seventh unit you get 30 units of revenue extra revenue but 40 extra units of cost your profits would therefore go down how did you do on this special edition 15 micro questions from across the syllabus i hope it went well there's a special macro edition coming up very shortly and of course you can always go back across the previous editions so we've got 20 editions of the edge effectively loads of questions for you to test yourself on and a bit of revision along the way